my channel and welcome back to my channel if you've been here before. My name is Amin and I'm so happy that you're here. Hi love. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about something that the Father has put on my heart um, that is important and I think it's very important honestly and I wanted to share with you guys and I'm not going to try to make it a very long video although it's a lot of information, a lot of information I'm not going to make this video too long for you guys. So. What I'm going to be talking about is idolizing things and idolatry. So what does that word mean? So to idolize is to worship as a god broadly to love or admire. Um, and the words worship means to declare worthy or to give something, think that something needs to be given the thought of being worthy of something. Okay, I thought it was the word. Anyways, um, so... Um, for me, also I'm giving you my own plain definition, it's putting something on a pedestal or looking up to something. So, as ch children of God um, and as people, human beings who were made by one God, um, I think that idolizing other things should be a no-no, okay? And also the Bible backs that up and so there's some scriptures that i want to talk to you guys about that really talks about um those simple things and what i said and just not idolizing things of this world so um i'm gonna be in deuteronomy 4 that's mainly where all these scriptures are coming from the chapter 4 um so if you guys want to just look with me or just listen to me that's fine as well so um, the scriptures that I'm going to be just, I'm going to just read them off to you guys and I'm going to take some that I wanted to highlight and talk to you guys about. So Deuteronomy 4, 16 through 30, Deuteronomy 13, Deuteronomy 4, 19, and Deuteronomy 23 through 24. Now all of these are like in the same little chunk, so just read straight and you'll see them. But I wanted to talk to you guys about Deuteronomy 4, 16 through 19 so we're going to go down there and it says so do not corrupt yourself by making any idols in any form whether of a man or woman an animal on the ground a bird in the sky a small animal that scurries along the ground or a fish in the deepest sea and when you look up into the sky and see the sun moon and stars all the forces of heaven don't be seduced into worshiping them the Lord your God gave them to all the people of the earth. So that is like telling you, no, it's not a good thing to do. Okay, so um, I kind of just wanted to touch on that. So where it says man and woman, that could be boyfriend, girlfriend, celebrities, friends, other people that you think are, oh, she's so pretty. You know, we all, and this is talking about comparison, but we all are individually unique and I feel like don't put yourself what God has given you the gifts and talents that God has given you to the side to be someone else you know and this is kind of like sparing away like going away from what I was talking about before but I just feel like that's important as well you know you shouldn't put your gifts and talents to the side because that's what you're doing when you're trying to be somebody else. You're putting your gifts and talents to the side that God has given you to be something that God hasn't created you to be. And so that is just like trying to be like someone else and that's kind of idolizing that person because you're looking at that person like, oh my gosh, you're putting them on a pedestal and trying to be like them, you know? And then talking about a uh, man and woman going in depth again, you know, celebrities, boyfriend and girlfriends, if you're in a relationship with someone, you should not put them in a pedestal. You two are two human beings, you know? You shouldn't say, you know, just, I don't know. You shouldn't put them on a pedestal, man or woman. Um, animals, don't put them on a pedestal. Don't worship an animal. Don't worship a person, you know, other than worshiping God, you know? Um, sun, the sky, let's get the sky, moon, sun, and stars, it says it right there. Automatically, when I think about this, I think about idolatry, I mean, not idolatry, astrology. Um, there's a whole thing into that, <laughs> but that's like the first thing I think about because I know a lot of people can be into that and stuff. But I also want to just kind of hit you guys with this question because when you sit back and really think about this, it really puts you in a thinking position and a thinking point to say, wow, wait a minute, let me make sure that I'm putting God first. Make sure that I'm 
looking at God for who he really is and the amazing God who he is. And so the question that I'm hitting you guys with and I'm going to say, um, why worship the things God made? but not the God who created you and those things that some people choose to worship. And I'm not, I just want to put a little disclaimer out there. I'm not coming at you and saying, oh, you're wrong. No, I'm just trying to direct you guys in the right path and help you guys to um, make sure that you're putting God first. Even though, you know, I'm not trying to come at you or say anything like that. I just want to make sure you guys understand that even if you are finding yourself an inkling of putting something before God or looking at something in this um, pedestal way to say, wait a minute, let me catch myself and redirect myself. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not coming at anyone, but I just want to make sure that you guys are, you know, knowing the behind the scenes and the reason of information and why, you know? So um, I also want to talk to you guys about if you are, if you have put yourself in this position where you feel like, oh my gosh, I've been looking at things the wrong way or I've been um what am I trying to say putting something on a pedestal or looking at things higher than I what I should be I wanted to talk to you guys about how much God cares and how much God will forgive you for that because God, our God is a forgiving God um he cares about you and not just um just every little bit every little detail you know and so I wanted to talk to you guys and share with you guys some scriptures that show how much God cares because People always say, oh, God loves you, or Jesus loves you, or God cares about you. But, you know, knowing and seeing the scriptures that back that up really help. And so I wanted to talk to you guys about Deuteronomy 4.31. And let me get there <laughs> before I just start. So I can read it for you guys. It says, for the Lord your God is merciful. God, Ew. let me start over, guys. <laughs> For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon you or destroy you or forget the Solomon covenant he made with your ancestors. So, um, I also have some notes on that as well. So, it, God is a caring God. And that's what that scripture talks about. He's a caring God. Um, he loves you and understands your mistakes. He will forgive you. And it truly, if you truly mean it in your heart. So, I also want to talk about this too because, um, you know, you can say sorry to a friend, you can say sorry to your mom, but you want to really mean it, you know, and so, oh sorry, this is my notes. <laughs> um, so even when you're apologizing and you're asking God for um, uh, forgiveness and you are saying, Lord God, I am sorry for that thing, that action, that thought, that thing I did. Um, that was against you or something that I didn't realize was against you, but it was. Um, it's called, this is called repentance. So that's the name of it. It's called repentance and repenting for the sin that you have committed. Um, and I just wanted to talk to you guys about how forgiving he is. And so when you do that, you have to really mean it in your heart. So you can say it, but mean it in your heart. Mean it with all that you have say lord i'm sorry for that and even if you don't understand well why is that a sin ask god or look in the bible read scripture you know um because he'll tell you he'll reveal it to you i always say that god loves for you to ask questions and i think that's true because he wants you to want to know more you know just like he wants you to have a relationship with him because he wants you to want to get to know him and even though he knows you completely from beginning to end he wants you to want to get to know him you know and so sorry i'm like going all over the place but um also i want to talk to you guys about isaiah 55 um seven through nine let's get there and then I will read it for you guys so you guys know. Sorry that I'm having a while flip, taking a while flipping. Okay, so 7 through 9 says, Let the wicked change their ways and banish the very thought of doing wrong. Let them turn to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. Yes, turn to our God for he will forgive generously. My thoughts are not your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So, um, 
that's telling you right there, you know, turning from your ways, that's repentance, and turning from your ways, he will forgive you generously. He said it twice right there. Generously, and he's a forgiving God, and he cares. Like, that is just so important. And I really want people to understand that he cares. It's not like, I don't know, he cares about you and everything. And um, I also wanted to share with you guys um, Psalms 51, 17. So this is just one verse. Okay, here we go. So 17, it says... The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart. Oh, God. Sorry, I almost messed up there. Okay. Um, so that's showing you right there that he doesn't want a sacrifice of anything but your heart. And he will, um, where was it? Um, he desires a broken spirit so that he can fix it. Um because he cares about you. I, I don't I feel like I keep saying that but he cares about you. You know, going through these things in life are not always easy. So, but he's there to help you. He's there to comfort you and care for you. And he wants to be there for you. And he cares. I feel like I keep saying that he cares. And that is telling you so many, so many reasons right there how much he cares. Um I also had another one that I want to talk to you guys about. Um, here it is. Okay. So this is talking about idolatry. One more time. <laughs> one more time, you guys. One more time. Um, it's in Jeremiah 10, um, verse, chapter 10, verse 10. And it says, but the Lord is the only true God. He is the living God and he is the everlasting king. The whole earth trembles at his anger. The nations cannot stand up to his wrath. So that's just telling you there too. You know, still in, still in that envelope of what I was talking about with idolatry. Um, so this is just all information for you guys to know. But I really do, like I was saying before, I want you guys to know that he cares. He cares about you. He wants you to have a relationship with him. Not just so that... You know, he wants a relationship with you because he created you. And it, I think that is the most reasonable thing. <laughs> he created you. He wants a relationship with you. You know, and not just because he made you, but in so many other reasons as well. And I think that this shows so many times that he cares about you. and He really wants you to know that he cares. So that was my video for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something new. And I really wanted you guys to understand that reasoning behind why people say certain things or why it says it in the Bible because it's important. Um, I love you guys. I know that Jesus loves you so much more and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Comment down below any other questions or any things you have to ask me about what I said or anything. I'm open for listening or answering questions. Make sure you subscribe so you can see more of my videos. I love you beautiful people and I will see you next time. Bye.